We're going to talk about the effect of taxes on stocks. It is one of our favorite recent topics here on Yahoo Finance Live, particularly as Brian Sazi and I get going debating it. And it was also the topic of the morning brief this morning, which highlighted some of the findings of Brian Belsky's note. We alluded to that note last week here on Yahoo Finance. And, and basically, uh, Belsky looked back at the history of corporate tax increases and corporate tax levels throughout history and looked at the increases, and you know they've been really from the 50s until now. And then during those prior corporate tax rate increases, we saw the S&P 500 go up an average of nearly 13% on an annual basis when we got those kinds of increases. So in other words, an increase in corporate tax rates had was not historically bad for stocks. Now, he doesn't get as much into the capital gains effect and, well, that's leaving aside for a moment whether, in fact, we will even see the increase in any of these rates if uh, the administration will succeed in getting them through. But let's say even if they do happen and even if they were to the rates that we're talking about, Belsky's research suggests that it's not going to be detrimental to stocks. And look at this. Brian Sazi, you actually wrote a piece today based on a Goldman Sachs note that supports this notion. Go figure. Miles, <laughs> and right on. If, if, uh, it's, <laughs> all right, so, Saz, I actually would like you to outline that Goldman piece first because I think it'll tie back to the, the broader discussion here. Yeah, so the story right now, it is uh, now on Yahoo Finance on the homepage. Uh, and a lot of this data comes in part from Goldman Sachs, but also the folks at LPI Financial uh, and Ryan Dietrich noting Three months before, three months before the past four capital gains tax increases, uh, the S&P 500 average increase 1.4%. Uh, after those capital gains taxes kicked in, 12 months after, the average gain for the S&P 500 is 4.3%. Now, Julie, I, I don't want to put a wrench in this, you know, optimism over the markets versus tax rates, but you know, when the capital gains tax rose uh, to 36.5% from 27.5% back in on December 30th, 1969. 12 months after that happened, the S&P 500 was down six tenths of a percent. Six months after that happened, the S&P 500 effectively crashed 20.4%. 20, 20 now the administration is saying they are looking to potentially increase the capital gains tax to 43.4%. So Miles, my question is, I mean, could, do we see a yeah. market that acts like it did in 1969 or do we see a market that acts like it did in 2013? All right, look, we've got two separate issues here, right? So I think at this point in the conversation, and the reason that I think um, the morning brief that, that Sam wrote about today, and I think I'm going to revisit the same topic tomorrow, uh, on the corporate tax rate, I think is the most fruitful conversation, is because, Sazi, when it gets to the capital gains tax, that is, I mean, obviously, yes, there's a, me a mechanical um, you know, financial aspect to it, but the capital gains tax gets us into explicit politics in the sense of I, an individual, have this money and the government would like to have more of that money at some future date. And that gets people very, very worked up. The corporate tax rate, we can be a little bit more calculating about because um, while corporations are people, people are not corporations. So we do not feel the pain that corporates feel. And the data on the corporate side is pretty unambiguous, which is that corporate tax hikes are not coincided with declines in the value of the stock market. But I would not say it is really for any reason other than governments are likely to look to raise taxes on corporations in strong economic environments, pro-cyclical policy. Therefore, the market is probably going up anyway because the economy is doing well, the economy is expanding, consumers are in you know, good standing, all of these sorts of things. Those are the conditions um, against which governments look to raise the rate of taxation for corporates. And so uh, I, I think it is more coincident than it is causal. And I, I think when we look at the proposals from the Biden administration, a likely increase, however modest in the corporate tax rate, um, is, is more likely to get through than any kind of change in the individual capital gains rate. Uh, because again, I think the cap gains conversation gets into very personal, very political, very donor-centric conversations that may not really have the juice for the current Congress, or you know, the current Congress might not have the stomach 
to try to get some of that stuff through. Well, Julie, this is anti-business. You're going to see taxes go up all over the place. Is it anti-business, though? I mean, I was He's just baiting. thinking I always... He's baiting you, Julie. He's of baiting. course he is. He Listen, that. you know, we've had various corporations come on the show, and I've heard uh, corporations elsewhere, as well as wealthy individuals elsewhere, warn about the perils. Oh, the sky is falling. You're going to have to pay for it if taxes go up. You know, the corporation's going to have to pass it on in some in some measure. And, you know, some of that is probably true. But, you know, if you look at the history, we have not seen the dire consequences, whether in the markets or in the real economy, by the way. You know, we've been talking about it through the prism of the markets. Hasn't happened in the real economy either that higher taxes have choked off growth. The evidence just isn't there. There it is. There it Where's is. the gavel? I, ho I, hope, gavel. I hope all these potholes get fixed with all this increased corporate tax money. Let's just say that. I look forward to I look forward to reconvening at 10 a.m. tomorrow and having the same conversation.